Across Africa, a new era has begun. Shifting our focus to a new horizon, connecting us with one purpose, to create and share opportunities to grow. Today, we are making a brighter tomorrow, built by our dreams and our energy. Across our continent, across the world, we are creating a better way to a better future. A pan-African future, together. Ecobank, a better way, a better Africa. It's the fourth episode of my SME Growth Series, and today we have Nduka Ude. Nduka Ude is DHL's biggest export partner in Nigeria. He is the MD and CEO of Export and Cell Limited, a logistics company helping over 250,000 Africans import and export over 2 million products between Africa and the USA. Cheers to empowering 1 million SMEs in Nigeria. Thank you for joining this webinar series as part of the My SME Growth Series powered by Ecobank. Now today we have a very interesting topic and we're going to be talking about earning FX by exporting to the USA and Canada. Now we all know the condition of the FX, you know, how small businesses are suffering. And one of the things you notice is that the biggest challenge most SMEs have is how to find buyers abroad. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Now, you know, I have been in the same situation as most of you SMEs have, you know. So how did we get into this? How did we get into the process of helping SMEs find buyers? How did we perfect it to the point that we have SMEs come into the system and within four or five months, they are doing fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a month uh, in FX earnings? It's very simple. You see, when the COVID hit sometime in 2020, we have warehouses in, in the U.S., you know, we have in Houston, we have in Atlanta, we have all over Nigeria. And these warehouses were shut down, right? And we, I had nothing doing. So I went on YouTube, started teaching people. And before you knew, you knew it, we had people sending items for us to put on Amazon and to sell all over the USA. You know, but we noticed one thing. Most SMEs did not have the right labeling. They didn't have the right packaging. Their products were not ready for the market that they wanted to export to. So what did I do? I came over to Nigeria and I now started teaching SMEs the right way to get their products ready so that buyers will be ready to accept those products. Now, in the course of doing that, you know, we had the uh, uh, people from the NEPC, Nigerian Export Promotion Council, reach out to us. And then they, they assigned us, you know, they signed an agreement with us that we should, you know, help about 500 businesses find buyers. So here we were with a task to help over 500 businesses find buyers. And it was tough. But you know, when you face a difficult challenge, you find a solution. When you are pushed against the wall, you do everything possible to find a solution. And because of that challenge, we have been able to perfect the system that enables any SME to find buyers, right? So when I say I know what most of you SMEs are facing, I can tell you for, for a fact that we have faced it. Now, this solution that we're going to be talking about today is for you if you have a product you sell locally. So if you have a product that you sell, it doesn't matter what the product is. It could be packaged food, leather, uh, art and craft, pet products, uh, beauty products, uh, wooden products, uh, fashion, building materials. It doesn't matter what it is that you're selling, right? As long as you have a product that you sell locally, we are go you are going to be able to use this solution to to go into export. Now, if you are somebody who have capital and you don't know 
how to go into the export business, this webinar is also for you. And again, if you are somebody who is trading all over Africa, but you haven't started selling to the US and beyond, then this is also for you. Now, why is this so important? Why is it important for businesses to go from selling locally to earning in dollars. Very simple. We all see the FX crisis we are in, right? Businesses must adapt. You must shift from earning in Naira because, again, you need that FX for machinery. You need it for so many things, right? So, and again, when you look at what is going on in Nigeria in the past couple of years, right, the former DG of uh, Smid and Deco Radar said that from 2017 to 2021, about 2 million SMEs, small and micro businesses shut down, right? The former DG of uh, the, the MD of uh, Asbon Association of Small Business uh, Owners of Nigeria said that in 2021 and 2022, 7.8 million small micro businesses shut down. And he came out again to say that in 2023, over 10 million businesses shut down, right? That tells you that there is a lot going on in the economy and you must be ready, you must adapt. If not, you're going to find it difficult to survive. So now a little bit about myself. I'm the uh, chairman of African Import Export Solution, um, uh, the parent company to export and sell. Uh, and I have been in the export business for well over 15, 15 years. You know, we have warehouses in Houston. We have in Atlanta. We have all over Nigeria. So anything that has to do with export, I know I'm coming to you in this webinar with a practical knowledge, not theoretical. Now, what is our goal? Our goal is simple, to take any SME from earning zero to as much as at any level that you want to, to earn in FX, right? And we do that by connecting you with the right stores. You're going to see how to sell on Amazon and so many places. All right, so in the next 30 minutes, I'm going to be describing, uh, uh, teaching you the system that we have developed. We call it the PWS system. And this system has been instrumental in helping a lot of businesses uh, blow up their export earning. It's divided into three simple, simple steps. One is the preparation stage, right? In the prepare stage, this is what we have seen has been the issue with most Nigerian businesses who are trying to go into export. They don't prepare before they go into export. Again, listen, what works in Nigeria will not work in the USA. It won't work in Canada. It may not work in the UK because you are selling to different consumers. Now, the send process deals with the rules and regulations of how to ship, especially how you can ship your products at a reduced cost. Now, the cell looks at what we call a multi-channel sales system, right? And it's <laughs> this system works. Like I said, we have used it many times and it's been amazing. Now, for those of you who stay till the end of this webinar, I'm going to give you two bonus. Number one is I will show you how to increase the acceptance of your product in the USA in under 30 days. So if you have products and you've been trying to get it to stores all over the USA and you have not been successful, stay till the end and I will show you a little tip of how to do that. Now, the second tip I'm going to give you guys is two sample documents that you can use whenever you are doing your export. These two documents are critical and I have seen so many SMEs get it wrong by not using the right document. Right. So in the preparation stage, what are we talking about? Right now, Again, you need to know that what works here will not typically work over there, right? The products, you know, the way you package, the way you seal it, and the, the way you do, do everything here is different. So that is one of the key things you, 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 you must understand. Now, the prepare stage, before you go into export, the preparation stage is made up of three key components. The first one is what we call product profitability analysis, right? The second is what we call rebranding for export market. And the third is repackaging for the market that you are shipping to, right? So what does this entail? Now, if you go through the preparation stage well, the first thing you're going to see is that you're going to be able to export products that gives you the maximum profitability, especially when you've run a product profitability analysis, right? 
it doesn't make sense a lot of times the products that i see people trying to export everybody wants to export gary everybody wants to export palm oil but you have so many products out there that are going to be more profitable and that's why you need to run a product profitability analysis now in running this analysis it is very simple you must be able to determine how how profitable your product is going to be in the export market whether you are shipping it via ocean, you are shipping it via sea, and then not only that, you must be able to determine your profitability when you are selling on Amazon, when you are selling to African stores, when you are selling to wholesalers, when you are selling to Africans in diaspora. This is one of the biggest issues most exporters make. They do not know how to determine how profitable it is to sell. Now, there's what I call base minimum pricing when it comes to export. The base minimum pricing is the lowest price that you can sell your product abroad. And then when you get there, depending on the channel, so if you're selling on Amazon, you're going to have to add other charges to cover the fees and the charges that Amazon will charge you, right? So by running a product profitability analysis, you are able to determine the right product to export, and then you are able to eliminate those that you shouldn't be exporting. Now, the next stage of the preparation stage is what I call rebranding, right? Again, I say it all the time, what works here will not work there. There are different rules, you know, especially when you are shipping to the US and Canada, you have the FDA rules, you, okay? You need to make sure that, especially for food and cosmetics, you have labeled your products to meet the FDA requirement, right? Your photography, the, the way you brand your product, you know, if you're selling on e-commerce platforms, your photography must be done in a way that is attractive to the buyers over there. Now, for a lot of you that want to sell on Amazon, Amazon has key rules, right, surrounding how you brand and present your product, how you take the photo photography, how you do the copywriting, how the graphics for that product is designed. And this is what you go through in the rebranding phase. Now, the last phase is what I call the repackaging phase. Again, like I said, the preparation stage is made of the product profitability analysis, the rebranding, and now the repackaging phase. Now, when we talk about repackaging, you need to be able to show that you are selling in a size that your, your audience wants. Right? I have seen people who come to me and they say, look, they want to export Gary. And some of them are telling me they want to sell Gary in 50 kilogram bags. Nobody is going to buy that. I've seen people who come to me and say they want to export and sell palm oil in five liter gallons. Nobody buys in such quantity. Okay, so again, you need to be able to look at your market, determine the size of the packages that people in your audience are buying. You need to be able to know that you are using the right package that meets the shelf life. You need to be able to understand the, the storage, um, you know, the storage requirements and the shipping requirements of the packaging you are using. So that's what you do in the rebranding, uh, in, in the, uh, the repackaging stage. Now, why is this stage so important? I'm gonna share a success story from one of our customers, right? So um, that's the customer you see there you know she sells locally sells dried fish locally now she's been getting requests from from buyers abroad right but again all the buyers want to pay her in Naira. So she has requests from African stores in the US and Canada. What they want to do is they want to send her Naira, you know, they send dollars to the account and then they look at the equivalent that others are selling and they want to pay her in Naira. But she has been wanting to earn in dollars, right? So what did we do? We first of all took her product and we had to take it through the three stages. The first stage was, was a profitability analysis. We had to look at the product look at how much others are selling abroad, what these African stores are selling, and then we computed the right pricing for her. After that, we had to go through the rebranding phase whereby we took the product and we rebranded it. And you can do this yourself. We rebranded it, made sure that the packaging meets the requirement, the FDA labeling, uh, the, the distribution, the allergens, the composition of the item. Those are key requirements requirements during the rebranding phase. And then we now revamp the packaging. You know, we had to create
create a packaging that had a transparent hole so that when buyers are looking at that product on the shelf, they can easily see through it. Now, her story is so amazing because after we did this complete preparation stage, when she presented her product to stores that she has been trying to sell to in the past, they all accepted the store. And she was able to do 60 to 80 million in just under four months in export. And that is what you see when you take time to prepare, you go through that stage, right? It is very important. Again, I will say it, do not go into the export business if you have not done uh, the preparation stage. So remember earlier when I said I'm going to give you a very huge bonus tip. Look, if you have if you have products that you've been trying to sell to stores abroad and they have been rejecting it, listen to what you do. Simply go to look, the problem most of the time is wrong branding, right? You have it branded in a way that is not appealing to the market that you're selling to. And that's why the prepare stage is very important. So what you do is simple. Simply go to Amazon, look for a similar product, ask the product that you want to sell, and then take a look at their design, take a look at their branding, right? The, these companies have spent thousands of dollars in perfecting their brand, right? So if they have done that they know what works all you simply do is take it model your product after that type of product so again what you see on the screen here is a similar product somebody who is selling cashew nuts on amazon and they are doing hundreds of thousands of dollars every month they have perfected the design and everything so all you simply do is model that design and you should be good now this is the complete preparation stage, right? You can see it's, 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 it's not easy, it's a complex, there's a lot that you have to do to prepare your product for the export market. But again, uh, it, it, at the end of this uh, webinar, we're gonna tell you how you will be able to learn the whole process, how EcoBank is gonna work with you to help you to get your products prepared the right way for the export market. Now, the next stage, after you have prepared your product, the next stage is the sending, right? Because again, you can have products that are fancy, but you cannot ship it out there, right? Again, listen, the NAVDAQ DG came out some time ago to say that over 70% of food products from Nigeria are held abroad. Why? Because they are not following the right process. Now, if you follow the right process that we are going to tell you, you're going to be able to ship these products duty-free. Over 6,400 products from Nigeria, most of them fashion, cosmetic, food products, can go into the USA absolutely duty-free. And you're also going to learn how to reduce your shipping costs drastically. Now that's it, I said it earlier, over 70% of the food products exported from Nigeria is rejected abroad. And the reason is simple. We are not following the correct processes. We are trying to ship commercial quantity products as personal quantity, and that is going to be a problem. So what are the three steps in the send process? The first one is the licensing. So again, before you ship, before you go into export, you must make sure that you have all the correct licenses you need, right? So if, you are selling, so if you're gonna be exporting cosmetics to the US, you need to be sure that you have the cosmetic facility registration. If you're exporting food, you have the food facility registration. If you're exporting alcoholic drink, you must get the, the right licenses from the TTB. And then if you're exporting art and craft, you must know the licenses, uh, typically local licenses, that you need for export, right? Now, once you've gotten the licenses based on the product, right, next thing is the shipping, right? For you to ship, you must have your, your, your shipping documentations correctly. And again, these things are not difficult. It's just that most people don't know what to do, right? There is a legislation called AGOA for the USA that enables you to ship absolutely duty-free to the USA, right? And you are going to learn all this uh, if you listen, wait, and see what Echo Bank has in store for you at the end of this webinar, right? You also have to know how to send your FDA pre-alerts and the Depending on the quantity of the goods you're shipping, you're going to need to have bond entry. You know, you're going to need to, whoever is receiving the products must file what they call an entry uh, bond. Now, the last part of the send process is warehousing. Look, I know a lot of people don't do it, but it is the only way that you can become extremely profitable with export. The essence of anybody going into business is to make money, not to carry all the money and give it to the airlines that charge you so much. Now, if you look at what is happening, 
Every single day, the airlines are raising their shipping costs. Why are they doing that? Because of the FX crisis, right? Now you see a situation whereby a small item that you were exporting for 25000 you go back to them, they tell you the new rate is, uh, is, is, is uh, 40000 the new process we talk about, the, the warehousing process, makes it easy. With this process, you are able to send items in bulk via ocean. Where you are paying $100 to ship via air, you'll probably pay $10, $20, or even $30, saving you so much. And then you now warehouse it. And it, like we said, we have warehouses in Houston and Atlanta. And from those warehouses, you can easily ship your products uh, to your buyers all over. Now... Again, we need to understand the implications of not doing things right. And I'm going to talk, tell you a story about a lady uh, who called me. You know, so uh, it was around 2018. I was in my office. So, um, you know, preparing to, to ship out items, uh, you know, to Nigeria, of course. You know, we had pallets and pallets of uh, air shipments to go out. So I was quite busy that day helping the managers who needed some extra help. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, the phone rang. I was in my office and this lady was really crying on the other end. You know, she said she saw me on YouTube and, um, you know, she had shipment that she brought in uh, from Nigeria. She just moved to California of recent. She saw that it was profitable selling food. So she decided to open an African store, sent about $10,000 to the brother back home to buy products. The brother bought them, shipped it to her. And as soon as he got to the U.S say they were seized you know so i felt sorry for her so i said okay i'm very busy now but i will help you send me your airway bill let me take a look at it and then when she sent that airway bill i saw that she did not even have the food facility registration right the product she had about 350 kilograms of food products that were seized it cost her close to four thousand dollars to ship those items in and look under such circumstances there's nothing you can do they gave her three options. The first one was either they destroy the goods, meaning she's going to lose close to $14,000, or they, uh, they ship the goods back, meaning that she's going to pay another $4,000. So she paid $4,000 to ship it in, $4,000 to ship it back. And the last option they gave her was that they were going to give her the opportunity to go and file the right paperwork right now that last option looks like a good option but when you go through the process of filing your documentation you know getting your food facility registration it could take up to tw uh, 30 days right so if it's going to take 30 days she has 350 kilograms of shipment demorage in the airlines warehouse was two dollars per kg per day meaning that every day her demorage was 700 dollars 700 times 30 means that she was experience you know she will encounter a demorage of close to 21,000. right so again don't make the mistake of going into uh, the, the the export business without knowing the right process and that's what we're going to be doing like i said echo bank has a special solution that they are going to be talking about at the end of this series where businesses are going to be well uh, uh, trained and, and nurtured on how to uh, how to go about the export business. Again, like I said, I have two special documents that I'm going to be making available to everybody who attended this. It's a sample of what I call a packing list and a commercial invoice. These are the two key documents you need when you are shipping to anywhere filling it correctly and it's a sample it will show you where to put the various elements that you're shipping and you should be good okay so again this is the complete send system right again i always like you know at times i, I tell people look on a scale of one to five how ready do you think you are to to send items via the complete system you know so again five means you are ready you understand the whole process you know how to get your licenses you know how to get your warehousing you know all the fda rules you know their goa rules and one is means you are not ready and you need help so tell us where you are uh, in that scale now the last process Remember, we've gone through two, two processes, the PWS system, we've prepared our products, right? We've done the rebranding, we've done the repackaging, right? Now you have sent your products to the USA. The last process is what we call the sell system. And in the sell system, you are distributing your products to multiple channels. 
you are selling on Amazon, you're selling to African stores, you're selling to Africans in diaspora, you're selling on e-commerce platforms, you're selling to re other retailers, that is the way to make it via export. Look, I have not seen a successful exporter, somebody who is doing fifty, a hundred thousand dollars a month that is not using this model. Very few. You need to be able to sell your products via what I call multiple channels to be able to make it big in export. Very, very vital. Take a look at some of these products. You can see how much they are making. These are simple everyday products. You know, that African black soap doing over a hundred and twenty nine thousand dollars on Amazon every month. Look at that wallet, a simple wallet doing close to a million dollars a month, right? So that tells you there is opportunity in, in selling via a multi-channel sales system. But again, you must start by selling on Amazon. That is what I tell every small business. And like I said, Echo Bank has an offer that they are going to show all of you at the end of this webinar how you can tap into this, how you can learn the whole process to sell uh, on Amazon. Now, it's not just Amazon. You know, a lot of people say, oh, export your product to uh, your brother back in the US or in Canada and they will help sell it. No, I believe in selling your product in as many places as possible. African stores is another key area where you should be able to sell. African stores are looking for products. In fact, we have people who, who, some of our customers who are in Nigeria here, who are doing over 25 to 30 million every month, sending products to various African stores. You know, the lady that I gave the testimonial that is doing, uh, did close to 80 million in export in under four months, she was selling to just five African stores. And we have accessed the database of over 1,500 African stores in the US alone that are looking for your products. But Again, you must have prepared your products. You must know the right way to send it so that it is not seized. You don't have any issues. You are able to ship it by paying absolutely no duty. And then the last phase is pushing it to these stores. Look, you have a lot of U.S. stores who are looking for products. I can tell you that for a fact. I go to conferences all over the USA where you have stores that are looking for products. Okay. Now you also have to be able to sell via e-commerce channels. There are ways that you can get your products selling in walmart.com, selling on eBay. We have our own uh, platform called African Natural Stores where we sell these products for you. So again, because your product is in the warehouse, we are able to sell it via some of those channels. And again, if you follow this process, you begin to open up yourself in the next six months, 12 months, you're going to have the opportunity to sell even in bigger stores, right? Now, this solution I'm talking about deals with our proprietary warehousing system. Now, that warehousing system allows you to be able to see your product at any point in time. You can log in, see your products and, you know, click a button and send some to Atlanta, send to California, wherever it is you want to sell. You know, so it's an amazing solution. Number one is going to save you close to 70% on shipping cost. Then you're going to have the access, the ability to ship to multiple people. You know what some of our customers are doing now? Very simple. A lot of them will ship these products to the warehouse and then they hire some of these social media, you know, young boys that know how to use social media, you know, pay them like 50,000 a month. And these guys are going to multiple areas to find buyers for them. Let me even tell you a trick. I don't normally tell people this trick, but if you use this trick, you can make a lot of money via export. Look, go to Facebook. You have so many associations on Facebook. You have, you know, associations of Nigerians in Houston, Nigerians in uh, uh, Winnipeg, Nigerians in Toronto. Go there, find those, those pages, and then begin to tell them, oh, I have this product, I can deliver it to you. We have somebody doing that who is doing close to 15 to 30 million naira in export on a monthly basis. There are many ways that we're going to talk about. That is not the only way to blow up your export business. There is a lot of ways. So again, when we talk about the sell system, like I said, you must be able to sell on Amazon. Now, this is another of our customers, one of our very early customers. She started selling on Amazon long ago, I think as far back as 2020, right? So, uh, you know, she had been doing everything right. She'd been getting all the licensing. And when we started working with her, the first thing we noticed was her poor packaging, 
right? So when we send the, when people bought the products from Amazon and it shipped to them, the honey was leaking. It had so many issues. So we had to pull the product back and go through the phase. Again, that is why I say you don't want to go into export if you are not prepared. And the preparation stage is very vital. In, the, in this particular case, her packaging was wrong. So we had to help her with her packaging. Right. So again, don't skip any phase. You must understand the preparation phase. Now, after she she took the product, she went back. You can see the redesign. In fact, if you search for that product on Amazon, you will see it now. She's making money, earning in dollars every month selling this product on Amazon. And that is what every small business should be doing. It's very easy. It's not a complex process. Any of you can do it. So again, this is the complete sales system, right? Whereby you have your product in the warehouse. We have multiple ways that we help you to sell these products, right? We have um, some US influencers that we have that will take a product. We, you know, we have a particular influencer that works with those in the fashion and cosmetic industry. She has access to about 2,000 stores, right? So if you are somebody who wants to get your products right there to over 2,000 stores, make sure you stay till the end of this webinar to see what Echo Bank has in store. You know, we have a USA export office now in Houston, and what we do when we see that your product is good enough, we have staffs that are there who are going to be able to take your product and present it to various stores, especially African stores. You need to be also be able to sell on Amazon. Like I said, you must be able to sell online. You must be able to sell to Africans in diaspora. And again, we have various ways we help you uh, find buyers for, the, for your product. So that's basically the end of it. But I don't know if I still have enough time. If I do, this is a testimonial I want you to listen to. Now, let me explain what is happening. Now, this lady works in Amazon. Right, she works in Amazon's New York office, and she joined our system, learning how to sell, uh, bring products from Africa. And she said that every day when she goes with her manager to see the items that are being sold, that you know you have things like ginger, shea butter that they are shipping thousands on a daily basis, right? And then she decided and said, you know what? I am from Africa. I know these products are coming from Africa but they have been sold by foreign companies. I want to be the one selling it. I'm yes. sorry to get you a little bit, just to, to, to say that I work for Amazon since 2020, and uh, awesome. I see, awesome. yeah, I, I, I have uh, for Abby to pack products, and I know exactly that some products from Africa, like Shea butter or, yes. or tea, the tea yes. or ginger is work very well because I pack it a lot. A lot of it, yes. But, yes. So I would like just to go inside that because I, when I go with my manager and check, yes, I have that that chance to know to see how what is selling. How many, yeah, how many products we can sell per, per, per day? We go, for example, from a thousand after two hours. Yes. Say, wow. A thousand products, shea butter or ginger after two hours is a lot. For how, a many lot. Sell, how many we can sell after two weeks is is incredible. It's I, I was like, yes. yeah. mm -hmm. That's why I have that chance to 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 have the product in my hand when it's packing. So I can say that I would like to go to that, like mm -hmm. a product, shea product. And mm. uh, sugar, I saw the black sugar. Again, the opportunities are endless. If you are an SME, take action. Make sure you follow through with what we're going to be talking about in the next few minutes after this webinar. Echo Bank has a special offer for anybody who watched this webinar. It is vital you stay tuned and make sure you take action, right? Export is the way to go. It is the only way you can save your business. Look. Earning in Naira in the present situation does not make sense. You must be able to earn in dollars, right? And again, I can tell you for a fact, we have tested it. The PWS system works, and it, it is going to work for you. Thank you.
Hello everyone, my name is Maria. I'm going to be moderating this session, the Q&A session. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Unduka. This was a very insightful session. I'm excited about exporting and I can't wait to go back, look at my notes and start my export journey. So I'm going to um, go through the questions, the Q&A. Some of us have dropped some very interesting questions already. Um, I just want to make sure that Mr. Unduka is still online. If you can just unmute your mic and say hello. Yes, I am here. All right. So the first question I have here is, what advice can you give to me? I live in the UK currently, but I'm planning to come back to Nigeria to establish a, I guess, a ready to wear, that's a fashion business now for Islamic clothing. And I plan to sell abroad. Do I have a chance to succeed? So it's a niche type of fashion business. So um, hold on, let me see that who is asking that question. So anonymous attendee. Okay, that's fine. So again, look, before you go into export, yes. before you go into any business, you must do your research. Is there a demand for that product? Right. And that is why when you look at the system that we have used that works for export, the first thing that we do is to run the profitability analysis. Right. And again, like I said before, uh, we're going to be working with EcoBank to help empower train businesses like yours on the things they need to put in place. If you do not run your profitability analysis to know if there's a demand for that product, you are going to be in big trouble. Right. So my first advice is figure out, have you done your research? Have you done your 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 checks to be sure that the product you are going to sell after all your cost is still going to be profitable for you? But again, looking at what you want to sell, I think it's a good product, you know, because I am a firm believer in finding a niche. Don't try to do what every other person is doing. Find a niche that works and then become the best in that niche. Okay. So that's my advice to you. First of all, run your profitability to be sure that the product is profitable. You can make good profit from it after all, all costs is taken care of. And then go go into it. That that's that's what I have to say on that. Thank you very much, Ms. Sanduka. There are some questions about warehousing. How sure. um, how would they arrange warehousing? And you know, um, they also want to know about shelf life, expiry dates, and products. Yeah, so we, we have to take it one at a time. Uh, what is the okay. exact question on the warehousing? Okay, how do one arrange for warehousing? Okay, so so that so is very this, simple. Okay. Arranging for warehousing, like we said, we have warehouses in Houston and Atlanta. Arranging to have your products warehoused there is a very easy process. Just reach out to our team, exportandsell.com. Uh, click on the contact uh, button or, you know, call us. The numbers are there. You will be able to speak to somebody who is going to tell you about the whole process of setting up warehousing. But again, like I said, we are going to be working closely with Echo Bank after this uh, this webinar. We are going to be hosting a, a a I think it's a four day intensive training for those of you who are really serious about going into export. So keep since you are part of this webinar. Keep an eye out for the email where they are going to invite capable businesses to be part of that process. Because again, there is so there is not so much I can teach you in one hour, right? Export will definitely take more than an hour to teach you the right process. And that's why we're going to be working with them uh, to really help those of you who are ready to dig deep into export uh, and become profitable. Yes. What's the other question on the uh, expiration date or something like that? You're on mute. Well, the question is, what is what is the duration for product expiry regulations? 
Okay. So again, that depends on your product, right? You know, the expiry date for one product is different from that of the other. But I can tell you that one of the key factors that affects expiration is the quality of obviously your processing. If it's dried products, did you dry it well? Right now, apart from the quality of your processing, the next thing that affects expiration is the quality of your packaging. Was your packaging done in such a way that all the air in the packaging is removed so that you have a close to a vacuum that makes the items last longer? So again, that is why it's very important when you are going into export, make sure that you are buying quality machines that do the packaging because a lot of those machines will tell you they are rating. This will package a product and is rated for three months. This is rated for nine months. There's a reason why one product can be rated to, to package a product for three and another one for nine because they remove all the air. They, they offer a better seal for that product, right? So again, I can't say what your shelf life is unless we know the product we know your processing, and we know the quality of the packaging system you are using. Thank you very much. There's another interesting question here. The person is wants to know about services. For example, um, I want to be able to sell cyber security to people in other countries. So is that something that you can help? With. Well, I know the NEPC has uh, an arm that is dedicated into helping people to export services like that. Uh, so you're probably better off reaching out to them, right? But again, we don't focus on, you know, uh, software services export. It's a huge business, right? You will just have to rely on marketing yourself online. And you're, you know, you're, there are many platforms out there, Fiverr and so many platforms where you can advertise your service, right? But that is not really what we are into. We are into exporting, helping you find buyers, giving you the warehousing in the USA, talking to buyers abroad on your behalf for physical products that you have. Thank you. Um... Emmanuel wants to know, he's currently, um, he says that he currently sells mined products and he wants to know how to structure um, the business for exports from scratch. When he says mined product, what is that? Is that minerals or what? Yes, I'm guessing yes. That's what okay. it is. So selling of minerals are things that you have to be uh, really careful and cautious about because there are a lot of processes that go into it, right? Those are things that are going to involve uh, most likely letter of credit. You're going to have pre and post inspection companies coming in, right? So these are things that are a little bit ad more advanced than the normal SMEs when they are going into export. Um, it's not something I can tell you for a fact. When we talk about pre and post inspection, the processes, your letter of credit and all those things, that is not something that we're going to be able to talk about in a whole day. In fact, when you have to do lectures on that, it, it could take two, three days to talk about. But all I will say is be very cautious who you are dealing with. Um, mm -hmm. I've had situations where people come up to me and say, look, I just lost two container loads of shipment because I did not understand what the paperwork was saying in the first place. So again, get a legal advice, make sure they look at the documentation, any contract you're signing with any foreign body to export minerals to them, make sure you understand every single thing in that contract. Right. The only other advice I can give you here is to make sure that there's a contingency for delays. So, for example, if you are not able to get the product to them uh, within a specified time, instead of them canceling the contract, uh, they can maybe remove 10 percent or 5 percent of what they were supposed to pay you. It's very important because, again, we've seen this happen many times because of the delays in getting containers to the ports. So, again, make sure you understand the contract you're signing with them. Have a lawyer review it. Don't be too excited that you got a, a, a buyer to buy your products. Get your lawyers to review it very well.
Hey. Thank you so much. Um, Ayomide wants to know if, she, yes, this, this recording will be on YouTube. You can listen to it after. And she also wants to also, um, she says that she sells custom made hand dyed textile. That's Adire. And she would like to know if it's something that she can export. So, you see, what I tell people is, again, that is why watch out for the email that is going to come from Echo Bank, inviting those of you that have capable products for a more intensive process, right? Now, when you talk about something like Adire, it is not that it's not a good product, but the question you need to ask yourself, do you have the number of buyers, that large number of buyers who are buying the Adire in a quantity that makes it good, you know, for you to be selling in mass. So when people come to me and say, I want to export Adire, what I always advise them to do is use the Adire material to make products that will appeal to a larger mass, a mass audience. So can you take the Adire and use it to make beach wares? Because that appeals to so many people. If when you come into the full system that we're going to be working with, with Echo Bank, you're going to see the difference between selling a product that appeals to the masses and selling a product that only one or two people are buying. There is a big difference. And that is why we talk about the profitability analysis. During the profitability analysis, in the preparation stage that we talked about, this is where we look at each product and we help you determine the type of demand that exists for that product before you go into it, okay? So just watch out and, uh, you know, once you get the email, make sure if you have those products you are selling, you are part of that system uh, that will be brought in for more intensive training on the export. Thank you. Um. Erika Juliet wants to go into periwinkle exporting business and she has prepared it in a way that it has a long shelf life. I'm not sure how she does that, but she's been having a lot of demand and she wants to know how to export um, in bulk. Look, export process is the same. Uh, once you know how to uh, do your documentation, you know how to do your... your uh, uh, what do you call it, your commercial invoice and all those things is the same process. But again, um, the US and Canada, especially because that's our key focus, it's almost the same with every other country. For something like periwinkle, as long as it's dried, right, that is typically one of the key things that they look at. As long as it's dried, it's not something that can cause diseases, right? Now, one of the things that you're going to need to have in place is what we call an FDA food facility registration. And it applies mainly to the USA. Canada, they have their own version. All other countries have their own version. But again, these are not things that we can go into in depth in this series. So like I say, again, watch out for the email for all of you that participated. But um, you just need a few things in place. Once you understand the whole export process, you have your FDA food facility registration. Um, you know, you maintain what they call GMP because at a certain point in time, uh, buyers, like you said, you have a lot of buyers who want to buy your product. You will reach a level where you need to put processes in place that will assure these buyers that your products are intact, you know, and that's where we start talking about things like GMP, good manufacturing practice, uh, HACCP, uh, hazard analysis and critical control points, and all these things we're going to treat uh, in the intensive session that we're going to be having with Echo Bank. So again, watch out for that email. Thank you. This next question is from an anonymous attendee. Um, I already have an approved Amazon store registration. How do I get the item to Amazon? How can I use your warehouse and how can I contact you to use it? 
So that's a very good one. I'm, I'm happy to see that some of you have already made the leap. You know, you already have your Amazon store. So if you look at the way Amazon works, Amazon will sell products to their buyers through two ways. One is FBA fulfillment by Amazon, which means that the products have to be in the Amazon's warehouse. The other is FBM fulfillment by merchant, which means you have to ship the products to the buyer. When somebody buys on Amazon, Amazon will send you an email and you have to ship it to them. Shipping products to buyers all the way from Nigeria is a no-go area. You don't want to go into it because you will have a lot of issues. Uh, and what happens a, a lot of times, in fact, um, it's happened to so many companies before where they try to list their products and the product is in Nigeria and they ship it. And, you know, maybe the product gets there two, three, four days late. And the customer says, look, I already bought it elsewhere and they cancel that order. You know what happens when they cancel the order? Amazon will refund them their full money and that money is going to be taken out. You know, so you have already shipped something all the way from Nigeria to them. And one of the things we saw a lot of the people that tried to use that model doing is that they will just cancel the order and tell the customer to keep the item. Because the cost of shipping it back is a lot of times is not even worth it. So you need to go with the FBA. Now with the FBA, and that is the solution we provide because with the FBA, you need to first of all, send your items to a local warehouse in the USA. And from that warehouse, the items are gonna be moved to Amazon as needed, right? We have a, a warehousing application and you learn all about this when you join the EcoBank series that again, like I said, they are gonna be reaching out to you guys. With that application, application, you are able to ship in bulk, you know, you are able to ship via ocean, you save so much money, you put it in the warehouse, and as people buy from the warehouse application, you can log online, see all the things you have, move 50 to Amazon, move 50 to California, move 20 to Texas, that is the way to grow your export business. That is what the big exporters are doing. Okay, okay. And again, we are going to clarify this whole process during the series, the in-depth series that we'll be having uh, with Ecobank. Okay, there's a question here from Jerry Chuku. He says, please, is it possible I export other people's processed and packaged products when I buy from them at their price and sell in the U.S. In, at an added price? Is it advisable regarding making profits? So let me, let me tell you a story to answer that question, and then you can decide from it. So we had a customer who came to us with another customer's product. At the time that they came we thought they were the manufacturers of the product. So we put the product on Amazon and it now happened that the manufacturers of the product saw the product on Amazon and they saw the huge price difference. And then they came to us, they were able to trace that we put it there for them and said, look, you guys are selling our products. We want you to take it down. That they want to be the ones selling their products on Amazon. So what does that tell you? It tells you that you can do it but the advice I will give you is to sign an exclusivity agreement with the manufacturer that you are going to be their exclusive distributor in the US, in Canada, or wherever it is that you are going to be selling those products. If not, when they see your product, they see that what they are selling for a thousand naira here, you are selling it for 10,000 on Amazon. They are going to come for you and say, hey, this is our product. We did not give you the right to export it. But again, you can do that. So again, during the product profitability analysis. So during the four days intensive that we're going to be having with EcoBank, the first day is dedicated to uh, the product profitability analysis. And during that first day, what we do is you are going to be able to look at products, all types of products, determine which is most profitable. It could be products manufactured by you. It could be manufactured by anybody. You can do white labeling, which means you go to a company that manufactures a given product, give them your labels and tell them to manufacture on your behalf. That is actually what I prefer you do. Go to a company that already manufactures and sells locally. Tell them, look, can you make this product in my name? Let them make it in your name. But if they are not going to be able to do that and they want to sell to you and you want it for export, like I said, have them sign an agreement, preferably an exclusive uh, distributorship agreement for you to be the seller of that product uh, in the country you are looking at. 
Thank you so much. Um, another question I have here is from Kingsley Anna Jemba. He wants, he says, his question goes, how do you receive payments from Amazon as an African? <laughs> very, very interesting question. So again, you see, the world is dynamic. I'll give you three ways that you can receive payments. Now, the first way is there are applications that Amazon is working with now that will assign you a US account, right? So you are able to so say you are selling on amazon.com. They are able to assign you a US bank account and they will pay all your proceeds into that US bank account and you can log in and transfer those proceeds into your uh, Echo Bank Dom account. So that is one, right? There's also another application that a lot of people use, uh, Payoneer. Uh, just that Payoneer, it will be asking you for so many things. Payoneer is very, uh, we have dealt with them at a very close level. They were having concerns about a lot of fraud coming from Nigeria. So they are very critical before they accept Nigerian businesses. So that is true. Uh, the last one is, we, depending on the size of your business, we can help you open a U.S. company. And with that U.S. company, we can help you get a U.S. bank account. And then you can have them pay into that U.S. bank account. And from that account, everything is done online. You can wire it locally. So there are many ways to do it. Uh, it's not a problem at all. We have people who are doing twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars a month uh, from various outlets that use the account, the company opening system, uh, and then with that they are able to do so many things. So imagine you have that U.S. bank account open, and you have products in the warehouse. Like I said, if you listen to this webinar, I gave you guys a lot of tips. You are able to find a small you know, one of those young boys that know social media marketing, you have a thousand products in the warehouse, they go on social media, they are finding you the buyers. And all you do is just log into your warehouse, click a button, and the product is distributed to them as it's distributing to them, that is being sold to them, you tell them to pay into your account. It is the business model for the future. And that is what uh, all of you, you will learn more about this whole process, right? Because again, it's not something I can teach you in one hour. It takes four days, right? Minimum four days to go through all this. Uh, so again, like I said, watch out for, for that email from Echo Bank. Uh, if you are one of those businesses that are selected to be part of this exclusive training. Now, let me give you guys a tip, right? To understand uh the you know the magnitude of what echo bank is doing for you guys when people come for my training these four days i'm talking about the minimum they pay is 500,000 naira for that training right but as part of this series you may be one of those who will get it uh, absolutely free uh, so again watch out for that email and uh, follow whatever process they are going to be pushing to you Um, thank you very much, Mr. Anduka. There's an interesting question here, um, and I think a lot of people have been asking it from passion. I would want to export shea butter oil, coconut oil, and natural spices, and I would like to know how to go about certification of these products. And do I have yeah. to have different certification for each product or just one? One you certification know, cover. Yeah, that, that is probably the biggest mistake we see with most people who are new into export. They want to export everything, right? You don't even know whether the shea butter you're exporting, by the time you finish all the manufacturing and the cost of your paying uh, 1,500 a liter for your diesel and all those things, it's going to be profitable. Now you want to do shea butter, shea oil, it's good. But again, what we teach in export is when you come to our system, we will line up all those products and we will do an analysis of each of them and find out which is most profitable. It's not just a factor of which is most profitable, but you need to know which is most profitable, which has the lowest manufacturing cost, which has the lowest packaging cost, which has the longest shelf life, which has the higher demand. You need to, there are about six or eight factors, um, probably about nine factors that we put into consideration before we determine that one product for you to export. 
And then when you perfect the system, you understand how the whole export business goes with one product, you now begin to expand into others, right? So I'll always tell everybody, you don't even know how to export one product. Don't go and be thinking of how to export five products. Watch out for the email that is going to be sent to you. If you qualify for it, you will be invited for that series, right? Don't try to, you know, put the cart before the uh, cart or the cart before the horse, as they say. Uh, but again, there is a lot that you can export and you can do profitably, and we see it every day. A lot of times, people come into our system with the mindset that they are going to export A, B, C, but after they go through the the first day, they begin to see that none of those products A, B, C that they wanted to export make sense, either because there's not enough demand or because the licenses and certifications they need for that product is a lot, or because meeting FDA requirements for that product is a lot, or because it doesn't have a long shelf life. So there are many factors that come into play. Uh, so all I'll say is just wait, watch out for uh, for the, the, the intensive four-day training uh, that we'll be pushing shortly. Unfortunately, we have time for just one more question, um, and it's from Grant Wanito. He says, Dear sir, are the laws for these imports to the US nationwide or different states have different laws on imports? So most items are the same laws throughout, because again, when items are coming into the US, you are dealing with the US customs, right? The US customs is not a state by state body, it's a national body. The US FDA is not a state by state, it's a national body. So anything coming in, you are dealing with a national law. But again, there are some products that some states that will have to go in through key fast, uh, designated ports. Right. So, so, for example, if you are importing uh, things like elephant tusk, all those type of endang endangered products, they have specific ports that are designed to handle those things. Right. Something else to uh, alcoholic beverages, you know, alcoholic drink is not every state that will allow you to import it in. We can move it through designated states and then truck it in. Once it's inside the state, no problem. We can move it to a designated state and then truck it into your destination. So, uh, but generally, I'll probably say 99.9% .9 or 99% of products, they follow one simple rule, okay? Thank you so much. Um, really enjoyed this session, Ms. Anduka. And thank you everyone who joined today, all 520 of us. Um, for for further for, to go further into this discussion, we will send an email to all the registered participants on the follow-up that Ms. Anduka has mentioned earlier. So just look out for an, Echo, um, an email from Ecobank Nigeria and Join us next time. Um, the next series, we will we'll put out an ad. Um, we we'll put out communication for the next webinar. So look out for that. And thank you so much for joining everyone. Thank you so much, Mr. Anduka. We'll see you bye next bye. time. Bye, everyone. Bye.